Hey y'all, welcome to Secret Slides and Alibis. Viewer discretion is advised on this one. Today we have the case of Miss Margaret Craig. Thoughts and prayers go out to her family and those affected by this horrendous crime. She was 71 years old when she was killed. A twisted Maryland mom and daughter are charged with dismembering the family's matriarch with a chainsaw and then grilling the body parts to get rid of them following a fight about a credit card, cops say. Margaret Craig, 71, had been dead for more than a week when police made the grisly discovery Friday at the Ken Hill Road home in Landover during a welfare check. When officers entered the basement, they immediately smelled the odor of decomposition, the Prince George's County Police Department said in a statement. A preliminary investigation conducted by homicide detectives has determined that Margaret's daughter, 44-year-old Candace Craig, allegedly killed her mother on May 23rd. The following day, her 19-year-old daughter, Celia Hardy, allegedly helped Craig dispose of her grandmother's body. According to the police, Craig answered the door and allowed cops to look for the older woman. In the basement, they observed blood and tissue on the floor near three white plastic trash bags, according to the charging documents. The cops said they also found what appeared to be brain matter inside one of the bags and noticed a knife, which later vanished. Additional cutting instruments that covered the chainsaw and cleaning materials and blood spatter were observed throughout the cellar reeking of putrefaction. When interviewed by the detectives, Hardy allegedly told them that her grandmother had accused her mother of credit card fraud and threatened to turn her into the police. The two women began arguing with the dispute escalating to a physical attack that resulted in Margaret's death according to the records, which do not indicate how the woman was killed. The next day, Hardy discovered her grandmother's body stuffed in a blue plastic container in her bedroom and allegedly helped her mother get rid of it. After that, Candace Craig her and her daughter dismembered the body, I believe using a chainsaw, and then attempted to dispose of the parts of the body using fire on a grill and in a bonfire, Assistant State Attorney Jessica Garth said. By the time police arrived, 10 days later, the rotting remains had been manipulated beyond recognition, but the prosecutor said they are confident the DNA testing will confirm the body parts found at the crime scene belong to the grandmother. To say it's disturbing is an understatement, said Prince George's County State's attorney. A little over two years before the carnage, Candace posted a sweet Mother's Day message on Facebook gushing that her mom was the number one woman in her life. Maryland, of course, we're following a story there. Uh, and I want to put a tweet from our Fox 5 team as the Maryland mother and daughter have been charged in the murder of 71-year-old grandmother. Police say they found human remains in a trash bags in the basement and a chainsaw. They both appeared in a Prince George's County courtroom this afternoon at 115 p.m. Eastern. Of course, following this very closely here on Live Now from Fox, as authorities say a mother and her daughter have been charged in connection with murdering the family's grandmother. Police have charged 44-year-old Candace Craig with first and second degree murder. Her 19-year-old daughter uh, is also charged with accessory after the fact. Let's take you out to some remarks here live, Rob Unfiltered on Live Now from Fox. And, okay, <laughs> let me, we believe that uh, the victim and the two defendants were all connected to the house in some way. Um, obviously, they were all related. And today, the two defendants were held without bond in this case. 
And um, do we know how she actually died at this point? At this point, um, that is still under investigation. Um, the ME is involved, and hopefully we'll have a cause of death uh, shortly. Is that something that can be determined with a, with a body that mutilated? Or is that you know, with, of... with the extent of the injuries, with the dismemberment, it is going to be very difficult. Um, so, um, you know, I think that the ME's office will do their best uh, to give us a cause cause and manner of death, um, but in this case, uh, which is unlike any case I have ever seen or experienced here in the in the county, um, I mean, saying it's disturbing is an understatement. Um, it's horrifying. Uh, the allegations contained in the statement of charges is um, just heartbreaking. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that this is um, Elder Abuse Awareness Month, and it's important, I think, to note in this case uh, that someone uh, related uh, to our victim was concerned enough about her whereabouts that uh, they reached out to do a welfare check. And the Prince George's County Police Department is a wonderful resource, as well as all of our municipal departments. Uh, they do these welfare checks. Uh, because of someone caring enough to reach out, because our department uh, was doing its job, uh, we uncovered a horrific crime. And so our job now is to ensure uh, that our victim gets justice, and that is what we're going to do. Uh, Jess Garth, who's the chief of our special victims and family violence unit, um, I'm going to ask her to come up and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the facts as we we provided in court today for those of you who weren't there. Uh, so Jess. Hey, I'm James, and I've been clean and sober for four and a half years. If you're thinking about getting clean and sober, you're probably terrified oh that your life is over. Uh, good afternoon. As the state's attorney said, you know, somebody did come forward and contacted the police department and asked the police to do a welfare check. Um, at the time that the officer arrived at the home, they were allowed to enter the home by <clears throat> one of the residents. In the basement, they uncovered the putrefying remains of the decedent in this case. Um, they locked down the scene. They went and got a search warrant. Um, and what they uncovered was, uh, as the state's attorney said, one of the most disturbing crimes that I think that um, this county has seen, um, at least, you know, in recent times. It looks like there was some sort of a disagreement between Ms. Craig and her mother, the decedent. Sounds like at that time she opted to take the life of her mother. Um, and then after that, she and her daughter dismembered the body, I believe using a, a chainsaw, and then attempted to dispose of the parts of the body um, using uh, fire on a grill and in a bonfire, um, according to the investigation so far. This is a case that's still under investigation. We do anticipate that we'll have additional facts that we develop along the way. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Is there any guess as to how long she may have been died before the police were called? Um, I don't know. There, There is some indication that the fire department was called out on May 27th to investigate one of the fires that was being used to dispose of the body parts. But further than that, I can't say. So at least it looks like a week, I guess. Yes. Then, I mean, obviously, we've kind of gotten to recognize you a little bit because you've been involved with some pretty gruesome cases. Unfortunately, pretty, so. Yeah, some pretty unfortunate stuff. And up there, you kind of talked about how this is one of the worst that you've ever seen. Yes. Add a little more, more context out here. Sure. Well, you know, I, I talk a lot about domestic violence, and often it's in the context of intimate partner violence. But family violence is, uh, you know, just as much a part of domestic violence. And in many ways, we're talking about people who, um, y you know, they are supposed to be protecting one another, caring for one another. When you're talking about your elderly parents as they get older, it's our duty as, as children to protect our parents. Um, and certainly our duty to not to not murder them and then to dispose of them in such a, a gruesome way. Uh, when, I, when I think about this case, I think about how hard it is to actually dismember a human body. I mean, some people have difficulty, you know, even cooking food, dealing with, with things like raw chicken. And when you're thinking about a body and then burning it, it just... Um, it's very hard for me to, to think about, especially when you're talking about somebody who gave birth to you, who raised you. Um, 
Um, so, yeah. Is it safe to say you may never know how exactly she was killed? Um, you know, our, as the state's attorney said, our medical examiner's office is going to do everything that they can do. Um, it is possible that some of the evidence was destroyed, that we may need to determine the exact, you know, way that she was taken from us. But um, I think it's safe to say that this case will be ruled a, a homicide. Any update on the knife that was on the floor and then was missing when the police went back? Um, I don't have any particular details. I do know a search warrant was executed. They collected many, many different um, tools, and they'll be tested for DNA and for blood as well. And we heard from Jackie Court, but Madam State's Attorney, is this? the most gruesome murder that you've seen in your time? I mean, ab absolutely. Uh, on so many different levels, uh, the fact that this was a mother, you know, you know, th there's, I don't believe I've had a case where a mother was killed uh, by a daughter. And I certainly don't believe I've ever seen a case where a mother was not only killed by her daughter, but dismembered by her daughter and her granddaughter. So just the thought of people who are in your lineage, people who are supposed to be carrying on your legacy, uh, being a part of your demise is almost unbelievable. And then not only but the death, but the dismemberment of the body, um, the body being found in multiple bags, uh, decaying in a home. I'm at a loss. Slightly different subject. Can I just ask one more? Were these like trash bags, gym bags, like? The information I have is that they were plastic bags, but I don't know the size at this time. But some sort of trash bag type thing. I, I would imagine. Okay. And was this home the grandmother's home? Yes. Great, but, um, baby Ken, um, I'm going to ask you to dig on it a little more. Yeah, I sure. That he, was, that he was on probation, potentially, at the time of the alleged attack on the bus and was in the district. Not registered in any school anywhere. It's also been determined. Should DJS have been supervising this child? This, the child is on probation. Should someone have been making sure he was kind of in school and, and living life? You know, because... The failure with DJS. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that question. Um, I think it's fair to say I've had a number of conversations with DJS. And uh, as late as uh, Friday, I've been in contact with the uh, new Secretary of Juvenile Services. I think that DJS is, uh, in many cases, overwhelmed just like other uh, agencies, especially public safety agencies. Um, but we all have to do better uh, because our young people have to be in school. Those who are on probation actually have to be supervised. And if they are supposed to be participating in programs, then they have to be accountable for participating in those programs. Uh, I think that there's a lot of work to be done at DJS. I think uh, that, uh, and I've spoken to the governor personally about it, uh, and he's committed uh, to looking at resources that we need to add um, to our Department of Juvenile Services to ensure that the services that they do provide are actually meaningful to the people who they serve. A lot of the services are really controlled at the state level, um, but those of us on the ground know what our kids need, and if we could get more of those resources locally, I think we can make um, a, a more, a better impact and be, uh, have programs that will better meet the needs of our young people. But we have to hold them accountable. Oftentimes what I hear is that DJS has done all that they could do for a child. Whether or not that child is successful in completing the program offered by DJS, then they will just discharge them partially because of the new laws and the limitations on the amount of time that a child can be under the supervision of the Department of Juvenile Services. So I think in many ways, everyone has, I don't want to say failed, but everyone has probably gotten it wrong a little bit. So our state legislature, we're asking them to rethink and relook at some of the laws, especially uh, the laws that speak to uh, punishment or sanctions that a child can experience. Uh, certainly rehabilitation is the goal of the juvenile justice system, uh, 
Um, and so we don't want to over incarcerate kids, but some of our kids need more supervision, more structure, and some of them need to be confined for a period of time. And they actually have to show improvement. They just can't uh, be discharged because uh, the program timing has run out. You know, that's just not fair to the child. It's not fair to the community either. So there's a lot of work uh, that, that we need to do. And, and DJS, I believe the new secretary knows that uh, he has a lot of changes to make. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You're just listening into this press conference there out of Prince George's County. Certainly a disturbing, a horrifying uh, story that that was their quote there of this as the mother and daughter charged with the murder and the death of their grandparents. I want to put up the mug shots one more time here on live now from Fox and give you a little bit more detail on what we know from this. Of course, they were held there without bond uh, as the 44-year-old Chandis uh, Candace Craig with first degree and her daughter also, Celia Hardy, charged with accessory after the fact. As authorities say, a mother and daughter have been charged in connection with murdering the family's grandmother inside their home. Officials, they believe uh, Craig murdered the mother, Margaret uh, Craig, on the 23rd of May inside their home in Landover, Maryland. Investigators say the following day, her daughter.